Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to discuss just how dangerous the Joker would be in real life. For the past month or so, I've made videos discussing how each of Batman's sidekicks would fight in real life, including all of the Robins and Batgirl, so check those videos out if you're interested. But for now, we're covering the clown prince of crime himself, the Joker. This time I'm going to start with a little bit of a background about the character, then discuss his fighting style, go into his equipment, then give an overview over just how dangerous he would be in real life, and finally discuss how to beat him. Okay, let's begin. We all know that the Joker is Batman's main enemy. He's a man who at some point was driven to the point of madness, but instead of, for instance, losing touch with reality or trying to convince people to change their politics, the Joker became the biggest supervillain in Gotham. The Joker's background is malleable and changes in every story that he's in. His personality in general often changes too, based on, you know, what story he's in and who's writing it. But the Joker, in my opinion, is most defined by his goals, whether it is to create chaos for chaos sake, to prove to humanity that society is a sick joke, or just to make Batman laugh, the Joker will cross any line to make it happen. Let's move on to discuss the Joker's physical attributes. Joker is 6 feet tall and weighs 160 pounds, making him pretty lanky, but the Joker isn't typically known for being the picture of health anyway. Regarding Joker's unarmed fighting style, there really isn't too much to say compared to some of the other characters I've covered before. Joker doesn't really fight with any particular martial art, except maybe sometimes boxing. But when I see him move and stand like that, it seems to be more of a cartoony copy of old-timey boxing than the actual boxing that real people use in competition. However, there is something to the Joker's fighting style. His movements are big and wasteful, and relatively imprecise, but he does seem to be able to be relatively dangerous in fights. I think it comes from the Joker's use of misdirection. Typically, this misdirection comes from his use of gadgets, but in his fighting it will be like, hey look at this idiot flying around, he'll never hit me, to bam, neck snap. I think if Joker fought a trained martial artist barehanded, he would probably lose, but against the average or unsuspecting person, Joker has the distinct advantage. It is a bit unfair to talk about the Joker without including his arsenal of weapons. After all, the whole point of the Joker is someone who always has something up his sleeve. Joker has used many gadgets over the course of his comic run, but I'm going to focus mostly on his more famous gadgets and the ones from video games like Arkham Asylum, Injustice 2, and Mortal Kombat 11. So in no particular order, Joker has been known to use a crowbar, sharpened metal cards, Thompson machine gun, rocket launcher, shock buzzer, Joker toxin, explosives, knives, handguns, chattering teeth bombs, puppets with guns in them, grenade launchers, canes, jack-in-the-box, giant boxing gloves, gasoline, acid, and shotguns. So let's get into it. Crowbars are a solid bar of metal with somewhat sharpened hook on the end. They are used to pry things open. They aren't made to be weapons by any means, but getting hit by one of these can easily break bones and lead to death, just ask Jason Todd. You can really only use a crowbar as a bludgeon, but the increased range and damage potential give a sharp and heavy advantage over anyone fighting barehanded. The same could be said for Joker's cane, which he uses in Mortal Kombat. The only difference I would make is that the cane wouldn't be as solid as a crowbar, but would still be heavy enough to break bones and kill. Furthermore, we don't really see this in Mortal Kombat, but in real life people have modified canes into concealed weapons by turning the handle into a hammer or pick, putting a thin blade inside the cane, sharpening the tip or putting a metal butt on the tip, and finally by just straight up turning the cane into a gun. Being that Joker is all about misdirection and violence, I wouldn't be surprised if his cane contained multiple weapons like this. I would say that obviously turning the cane into a gun would be the most deadly option, rather than sharpening the point uh, at the bottom make a spear. Uh, oh, and then I would say third place would be like turning the handle into a pick, and probably the least deadly option in my opinion would just be having a knife inside of the cane, just because it would have the least amount of range, although it would still be pretty deadly uh, and have the potential to catch people off guard. To continue talking about blades, uh, knives are one of the Joker's signature weapons. 
I spoke about knives pretty extensively in my Red Hood video, but let me just say a little bit more. Knives are more deadly when they're used for stabbing. There is really only two different kind of knives, those used for utility and those for killing. Most military people lean toward utility because in the field, a reliable utility knife is more valuable over a dagger that they will probably never get the chance to use. Joker, on the other hand, doesn't really have a need for utility. I mean, sure, he has all these traps and gadgets that he makes, but I think it would be closer to his character to use some sort of funky looking dagger, probably with serrations, not because that'd be the most efficient thing. In fact, serrations typically are more of a hindrance than a help on blades due to getting stuck in clothes and the like but I would say that it suits the Joker just because he wants to be as threatening and violent as it's possible. Knives can also be thrown, but Joker is not known to do that. If he's going to throw something at you that's not an explosive, it's probably going to be sharpened metal playing cards. Magicians and carnies can throw playing cards surprisingly accurate, so it's not a surprise that Joker would make metal ones specifically for that purpose. Again, it's not the most effective thing. I mean, if you have a gun, why bother throwing a card, which probably won't be able to make a deep enough damage into the skin to cause anything that would be life-threatening. But the Joker isn't about effectiveness, he just wants to cause pain in the most enjoyable way possible. Let's talk about Joker's guns. Most famously, he uses a revolver where the first shot fires a flag and that says bang on it and then the next shot actually shoots the flag and then the rest of the rounds are just bullets. This is a pretty effective weapon in the grand scheme of things but once again it's not as efficient as it could be. I mean Joker is basically choosing for his gun to have one less shot and then the other shot shoots a flag instead of a bullet. But then again that flag has killed people including himself. Uh, so, I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, I guess. Joker has also been shown to use any type of firearm. As long as he can put some spray paint on it, it's good for him. Uh, like Red Hood, Joker's willingness to use lethal force expands his potential level of deadliness and his diversity of attack. Guns would probably be the Joker's best weapons, especially his high caliber rifles and rocket launchers. Similar to his hand-to-hand -hand style, Joker doesn't seem to be able to handle firearms like a professional. For instance, I doubt he could clear a room like a Navy SEAL. But once again, despite any clear training, Joker seems to be deceptively good at shooting. Joker's other conventional weapons are his explosives. He seems to be pretty adept at creating IEDs, usually adding his own flair, like turning them into remote control chattering teeth, explosive jack-in-the-boxes, or making a C4 birthday cake. He also, uh, in Mortal Kombat, makes use of gasoline, pouring on enemies or on the floor before lighting it. I wouldn't be surprised if he also uses things like Molotov cocktails. Fire and explosives are obviously very deadly, and given Joker's general disposition, I'm actually surprised that he hasn't blown himself up yet. I'm sure in some DC timeline, there's a Gotham City that is mostly peaceful because the Joker blew himself up trying to wire explosives into a choo-choo train. Joker typically has a flower on his lapel that if he squeezes, it shoots acid. I mean, acid could most definitely be lethal and for sure painful, but people do survive acid attacks all the time, and of course, shooting acid isn't going to have the same effect as a bullet, but that's what makes the Joker so deadly. He lures you in with his uh, eccentricities and bam, suddenly your face is melting off. Another Joker classic is the hand buzzer. I mean, it's a buzzer that generates enough electricity to kill people, meaning that hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, if Joker can just touch you with his palm, you're gonna die, making that a pretty effective weapon. I'm not too sure about the giant boxing gloves Joker sometimes uses. I mean, they're really big, which would mean that to be used, they would have to be very light, but at the same time, the gloves seem to hit like they're made of metal. I don't think that they are something that the Joker or any human being without super strength could use as a handheld weapon, but I could totally see him using it as like a springboard-like trap. I don't think it would be the most lethal thing ever, but it's totally the Joker's style. The last weapon I'll discuss is maybe one of the Joker's best. That would be the Joker Toxin. 
In many wars, particularly World War I and the Iran-Iraq War, airborne gases were used in mass deadly attacks. Accounts describe people choking and dying within seconds, sometimes even when they're still wearing gas masks. Joker has his own poison that causes laughter, smiles, and finally a painful death. To make matters worse, Joker is completely immune to this poison, so at any point he could fill a room or even a large section of Gotham City with it and not have to worry about the consequences for himself, giving himself a huge advantage over the crime fighters of Gotham, who usually don't wear gas masks or, for that matter, full chemical resistant suits. So that's basically how the Joker would fight in real life. You can see that most of the danger doesn't really come from Joker's physicality or his tactics, but from his wider range of creative and deadly equipment. The real danger from the Joker comes from other intangibles as well, such as his abilities to recruit and lead men, and to set up elaborate plans or traps. So if I were to give Joker an arbitrary danger level, it would probably be a 7 out of 10. Joker is exceedingly dangerous and unpredictable, but that same unpredictability also holds him back. He's not going to try and kill you in the most efficient way possible. Joker could have a rocket launcher pointed at you or several ga uh, canisters of Joker toxin lying around which he could release in seconds, but he would sooner not use those weapons and maybe instead try to shock you to death with his hand buzzer because he would find it funnier to do it that way. So, to the average person, Joker would be an extremely dangerous terrorist, but to someone like Batman or Deathstroke, taking him down directly isn't too difficult a task. As promised, here is my opinion on how to defeat the Joker. Joker, despite his larger-than-life status, is a man, and not only that, he's also someone who favors indirect tactics even when it's to his own detriment. To counter him, you have to be as efficient as possible. Whether you're a part of a police unit or you're Batman fighting him in close quarters, the trick is to move fast and with precision before he has time to pick a gadget to kill you. The Joker always plays with his victims and because of that is prone to underestimating his opponents. If you don't give him time to react and don't go at him in a way which he would suspect from you, then you'll have a distinct advantage. Be wary though because the Joker will have contingencies such as explosives or hostages. Anyway, so that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the slight change of format. I just want to say that I've been blown away with the support I got from you guys on my Batgirl video. Despite only getting around 70 views, I managed to gain almost 10 subscribers, which I mean that's 1 out of 7 people who watched the video subscribed, which is, that's just like the craziest ratio I've ever seen. Uh, a reminder, when I reach 100 subscribers, I'll drop a video comparing all of Batman's sidekicks, including the Robins and Batgirl. Until then, the next video I'm going to make will cover just how deadly Harley Quinn is. So if any of you are interested in that, please subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.